Okay, so at this point, uh, we've created uh, some of the graphical assets. We've got these various scenes, and we've got scenes where it's going to be simple interactivity, scenes where you're going to have some hit detection, uh, branching, the ability to go to different uh, directions, uh, sort of dead end or red herring things that won't actually do anything. Uh, definitely a dead end sort of dead thing, and then a possibility, and then ending good, ending bad. So uh, that can be expanded upon so much when you have your time to work on it to add these graphics. When we talk about sound, we'll add. We'll talk about adding sound. But let's set ourselves up at the very least that from the home screen here, we can go over to the uh, help screen. <clears throat> so these buttons need to be turned into symbols. Play. Go ahead and select it. And then hit F8 to convert it to a symbol. We'll call that MC. It's a movie clip. MC Play. BTN. Registration in the center. For help, same thing. MC Play BTN. So this is the inst uh, this is the name of it in the library which sometimes is confusing because there is the name of the object in the library and then there's also the instance name on the stage. And oftentimes they can be the same thing, but usually what I'm doing is in the library I've got the prefix of MC showing that this is a movie clip because of course we can make movie clips, we can make graphic symbols, button symbols. And I've got the name and then further explaining BTN, it's a button. So now that's an object. It's a symbol. I'm going to select the help button. Same thing. Select it. F8. MC help BTN. These names can be whatever you want. Named however you want. But I'm going with um, lowercase for the type of object it is. MC. Then capital letters for subsequent letters in the name. Okay, that's one part of it. The next part is these need instance names. So when you select, when you click once and select the play button, there's no instance name in the properties. Top right corner, right? So that we will call simply we'll go with um, BTN at the front. Uh, start. So here it shows that this is going to behave like a button, something to click on. BTN start. The help button, of course, then will be BTN help. So I'm going to select that. BTN help. We'll have some action script that'll take us from play, I mean from the help button first to the help screen, then from the play button to the gate scene. So we'll need a new layer called actions. And as we saw with the Tap Frenzy game, uh, when there's different scenes, the scene will play automatically unless it gets stopped. So. We have a bunch of scenes here, and the game is just going to zoom through it all if we don't add stops. So we're going to create an actions uh, layer. I'm going to right click to open actions. I'll add the most basic stop command, and then I'm going to copy and paste the actions uh, layer into every scene. we're going to need at the very least every scene to stop to not play automatically because we need interactivity. So once you've got an actions layer here and you wrote the, the stop command, uh, you can right click the actions layer and select copy layer and then take a moment to go to every scene and paste that in. That will stop the game from just proceeding from frame 1, scene 1, all the way to frame 90, scene 90. 
the game will just like loop infinitely in a really weird way. So this is the easiest way to do this. Uh, copy that layer, switch to the help scene, right click, paste. And then you get it there. It comes in with the code, it comes in with the name. Easy. So add that to all of them. Every scene. We've done all of this work so far. We haven't seen it on the device yet. So after you paste in your actions layer to every scene, go back to the start scene, save it, and then take a moment to set up your publish settings, your Air for Android settings, so you can actually see it on the device. Nothing will happen yet, of course. The buttons don't actually go anywhere. But at the very least, I want to confirm uh, that it all works. And you can reuse the same um, P12 certificate you've been using so far. And uh, you want to go to your Android settings, as we did with the, with the other game, language, set it to English, permissions, read, phone, state. We can't do anything with icons yet. Deployment needs your certificate. Publish that to your device just to confirm that it doesn't automatically loop and loop and loop and loop. That it does stop on the uh, on on the start uh, scene. So take a moment to do that. it and it doesn't look landscape whoops I forgot to put it landscape as well it'll appear portrait size shrunk down so remember you set your general settings to uh, landscape and also the quick way to test in the future after you've closed your Android settings remember you can go up to control menu um, test movie on on device USB and then subsequent times you just do control test and it'll remember you want to go to the USB connected device and it'll publish it There it is. So on my tablet, it is landscape. Good. The play button, help button. Don't do anything yet, but at least the game is not looping infinitely. So we can then add some real code. Okay, so back to start scene, frame one. After we stop the, the project from proceeding, uh, as we've done before, we want to set up a few uh, imports. We want to import some of these libraries. The point of this is that, let's say there's like 200 ActionScript commands 
not all of them are sort of activated when you create a project. So you have to import the various commands. Um, we did that previously. We imported a few things. So we'll do it again here. Import space flash dot events dot touch event semicolon. So originally action script was set up to have interactivity on a web page, which was a click. Uh, now we want to say, okay, well, our project is going to be on a tablet. It's going to have touch. So we want to be able to use touch events. So adding the quick note here, import various action script libraries for features. And if you'd like, you can fully also document that to say um, device touch ability. So with the touch event, we are able to uh, have it detect a tap, a tap and drag, a two finger tap, etc. That's what these imports do. They give you more features, and specifically this one lets you work with touch abilities. We'll do another one. Import flash dot events dot event. Oops. Events plural uh, dot events with a capital E. Pay attention to more events. On the event of a tap, a double tap, on the event of, for example, this object touching that object, so hit detection, that, those are events as well. What happens when this object touches that object? Something happens, that's an event. So pay attention to more events. example hit detection we'll do another one import flash dot media dot sound guess what that one's about Right, I heard someone say all about sound. So playing sound, pausing sound, loading sounds from the library. We had already the built-in ability to play a sound from the timeline, which when you get to an advanced game that has interactivity and such, the timeline is it doesn't work as well, so we want to control sound via action script. So sound capability or sound ability. There's one more here. Import flash events, or actually flash dot uh, net dot URL request. So this one, what's the best way to say it? Uh, load external content ability. So conceivably, um, this way we can then load up content externally from a web address and such. We can pull something off of a server uh, to load into our project. So this is our imports section. We have then the ability to start to import, I mean use extra features. Okay, next uh, we've got multi 
touch dot input mode equal to multi touch input mode dot touch underscore point very specific spelling on all of this so this is basically activate all the uh, touch gestures of a device multi-touch so tapping with two fingers pinching that sort of thing there's just a plain old tap but we have here the ability to, then to do multiple finger ta tap. So when we were working on the Touch Frenzy game, remember there's the instance that someone's playing and then, oh, they got to answer a text message or they've got to do something else in another app. They're going to pause the game and go to another app. They press the home button, they, they exit the app temporarily. It's still in memory, but they've deactivated the app. So we're going to use these, we're going to have these set up as well. So event uh, listener for when app is paused for when game is pause, paused. That's native application dot native application dot add event listener parentheses. We're waiting for an event of activate comma then we run a function what happens when the when we start the game the game is activated so this code is waiting whenever the game is activated do something when the game is deactivated do something else this is mostly going to work with with music with the sounds because if you don't program it, you exit the game and the music is playing, the music will continue to play, even if you're in a completely different app. So we have to deal with activating and deactivating. So I'm going to copy that line, paste it right after itself, but then be very careful to change it to then deactivate. event listeners for when the game is paused or resumed. Notice it should all be blue because all of these are commands in uh, ActionScript. If any of these are, are black, uh, they're the wrong color, meaning you've misspelled them. It doesn't understand that it's, a, it's an ActionScript command. In my case, oh, something doesn't look like it understands it, it's the wrong color. So, oops, I misspelled listener. Yep. So, listener right there. Well, the first part of these parentheses is saying on the event of the app being activated or on the event of the app being deactivated, comma, we run a function. Like I said, this is going to be related to music. So, we'll have fn, we're going to run a function. We'll start with the function of music activate. Function music activate. So then you might get the idea here when the game is paused, this will run a function called function music deactivate. Remember, you've got pretty much uh, semicolons at the end of every line uh, because that uh, ends the command, it ends the statement. There's very few cases where there isn't a semicolon. So these two lines here are event listeners. They're listening for events. They're waiting for something to happen. They're waiting for the game to activate or deactivate. Then they run a function. Next line, then we need to define these functions. Define 
the FN music activate activate function. So that's going to be, you say function, that's the command, that's the keyword, we're going to do something. Function, we're going to define a function called fn music activate, parentheses, colon, void, curly braces, break those apart. and FN music activate these parentheses then have to say this function works when there's an event of type event so just like we've got up here. Some event is going to happen. The event is activate. Well, this function works only by detecting an event of type event, which looks redundant here. But other times we have something like event touch. So this function would only work when something is touched. This event works when the app is activated or deactivated. I mean, this function works on the event of activate or deactivate. So don't forget the stuff there in the parentheses. Uh, we're not going to do music just yet, so we're just going to uh, have a message happen here. Trace uh, music is active. Music got activated. So this will display a message internally that the music started. We need something very, very, very similar for deactivate. So I might save myself a little bit of effort by copying that whole little chunk of code, 16, 17, 18, 19, pasting it and changing it a little bit uh, to deal with deactivate. So all of this that I wrote here, I'll copy it, paste it right below itself, define the function music deactivate function. So it's going to be fn music deactivate. Trace will say music got deactivated. So just to confirm my spellings here, copying and pasting, especially notice fn music deactivate should be black, as well as function music activate should be black because those are a couple of lines of code that we invented. We invented a function called music activate and one called music deactivate. There's no such thing built into ActionScript that is those two commands. So everything that's built in ActionScript is oftentimes either going to be um, that purple or that blue. Uh, anything that is black should mean that it's something that we invent so that when my listeners misspell the things, okay, great, that means that is something you invented. But no, it needs to be listener, so that's got to be blue. Things that are green relate to messages, messages that happen inside of the system. The user is not going to see this on screen. This is just a message for ourselves. The game has deactivated. It shows proof it's deactivated if that, if that, uh, if that trace message appears. What, will act, will it, what it will actually do, we're not there yet because we need to import music, we need to set up a way then to keep track of the music that's playing, and um, well, actually one thing here before I lose track of it, one more thing to change here, um, to find the function deactivate music, it also has to have a colon, not a colon void, but a colon number. This was very similar to what we did with the tap frenzy. The way music works, obviously, I'm playing a game, I pause the game, I come back, the music starts exactly at that last point. Well, that doesn't happen automatically, of course. None of this happens automatically. We have to program everything that happens in a game. So regarding music activating and deactivating, we need to keep track of what was the last millisecond when the music was playing, keep track of that. Then when we restart the game, start the music from that millisecond, or else the, game would or else the music would start over from the beginning. So we saw this idea in Tap Frenzy. We're going to use it again here. 
when we deactivate the music, we need to keep track of a number of when the music was paused. So we can further note it returning a number of when music, uh, returning a number for when, how do we say, returning a number from when the music time code, yeah, returning a number for the music time code. Whereas the previous function of void doesn't return anything, it just does it. It detected. The game is active, but it doesn't return any value. Deactivating returns a value, which is what millis at what millisecond did the music stop? Okay, so then we'll make some event listeners to pay attention to clicking play or clicking help. Next lines. Let's see, event listeners for the play help button. So we've got those instance names. What do we call it? BTN play. Confirm. Starter play. Start. Yep. Yep, I name these things and I forget about them right away. It is my curse. So BTN start. Dot add event listener. These event listeners are very, very, very common. There's a bunch of types of events. We have the event up there about the game activating or deactivating. And now here's an event based on a person's tap. We will need one for the help button, BTN help. So we're waiting to ha for something to happen upon those those buttons and what we're waiting for specifically is a touch event dot touch tap as these pop-ups happen you may see that there's other kinds touch begin touch end touch move touch out touch rollover we want touch tap later on when we do the drag it's going to be a different sort of a thing comma something and that's going to be required for both help and start well the point of um, pressing the start button is that we will go to function go start and help will be function go help these functions will take us somewhere they will go from the current scene, they will go somewhere. They will go start. Perhaps, uh, maybe based on actually uh, instance names, uh, that might make more sense. So if we've got fn go help, that'll go to the help scene. fn clicking the start button, maybe it'll make more sense to then go to the gate scene. But again, mine is called gate, yours may be called something else. So if you'd like to call it something else, you could change it, but I'm going to keep mine generically, function go start. My start screen where the game starts, in my case, is gate. I'll keep it as is like that. But just make a note that you can name these various things based on your scenes, the names of your objects, etc. So then we'll say define function. We'll do, we'll do help first. We can say define function go help function. That's function, the name of the function, parentheses, colon, void, in this case. It's not returning anything, it's just doing what we told it. And then we'll note that this is the end of that function, parentheses, 
this function runs after an event, specifically touch event. The point of pressing the help button is that it takes us to the help screen. So we can trace that. We can note that message. Go to scene help frame one. So we need something extremely similar for start. We can save some, ourselves some effort by copying and pasting and changing a couple of things, or typing it from scratch. But oftentimes the copy and paste really helps. So I'm going to copy that whole chunk, the comment, the function definition, the trace, the end. I'm going to copy that and paste it after itself, and then change the details, which is define, go start function. Go start. It's still the same type of event. It still returns nothing, void. It will still trace, but then it's going to take us over to scene zero gate. Okay, so those trace, those messages are simply notes for us as the programmer. It doesn't actually do anything to make it actually do something. This is when we had the code where we had movieclip.go to. So, movie clip parentheses dot go to and play. semicolon the complete code is then this dot root so the movie clip in question is the main root level because we can have movie clips in movie clips and that'll that'll be they can have their own animations and their own code uh, for example, when we when the person tries to move the painting, remember the the joke on that is they try to move the painting, then it falls and breaks. Well, that is that's got its own timeline. Movie clips on screen can have their own timeline, doing their own thing. You can have like uh, maybe there's beakers on a shelf that are bubbling. So those are objects that are movie clips that are doing their own thing with their own timeline movie clip this route is basically saying from the top level, from the main level of the app, we will go to and play somewhere something. We'll go to one, so that's frame one of the name of our scene. In quotes, then is scene help. We've written a lot of code, but we haven't tested it yet. We will do our function start in a moment. This is a good time to, to stop and save and try to run it on the device uh, to see if we get any error messages and try to fix them. If uh, then you test it and, and you check it on your device, you should at least be able to click on help and it will go to the help scene. If it doesn't, we'll... We'll do a little help. Let me check mine here. I got a little thing here. Function does not return a value. Okay, that one. What's if you get this? Function does not return a value. Let's fix it right here. Um, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Uh, it's saying right here. We created this function music deactivate, which will return a number. But we're not saying what number are we returning. So just for the moment, new line on line twenty-four ish, and we will say return zero. The function of music activate is void. It doesn't return anything. It just does something. 
The function of deactivate music does return something, because of colon number, which is, at what millisecond is our music currently playing? We didn't write, well, let's return that value. We're not dealing with music yet, so we'll just say, oh, return zero. We don't know what, what time the music is playing, that's our number. So if you got that message about function not returning a value, just put return zero, that should take care of it. And when you test it, yeah, then it'll behave. So test that, check if you've got any errors. If you've got errors, call us over, let's figure it out. Maybe a little misspelling, and then we'll continue. That's the code so far. Make sure you put return zero on that. Anyone who learned out? Here's what I got at the top. Maybe maybe you wrote event instead of events.
Yet it's in the same sort of general family. Which one which one would like to learn about us? So basically what I've got those lines right there at that screen just to put it in What does this say to the center part? Because I thought I was trying to do it. I don't know if I'm going to go to the Alright, so if you, um, if you test it and you eliminate all your typos, you get the result of the home screen, which um, then has the start button and the help button. If you hit help, then it goes over to the help screen. Then when you get to the help screen, you're stuck because that back button doesn't work. So we'll take a moment to go over to the help scene. Uh, and get that working, that'll be pretty easy. Uh, and then when we come back to this um, um, welcome screen here, then we'll have it go to the main game. But we'll go over to the help scene. This is another example where it might be very, very, very useful to do a little copying and pasting. 
because what we're going to need is we're going to need for uh, something to be clicked on to run some function and do some result. So you can save yourself a lot of effort if you do what I'm about to do here, which is that the uh, I can copy the event listener, and then copy the function definition, paste it into help, and just then change the details. Now also, that back button actually is not a symbol yet, so we'll fix that in a moment. But I'm going to um, copy the event listener plus the function and jump over to the help scene, paste it in after stop. And the things that we're going to change is we're no longer waiting for the help button to be pressed. We're waiting for the back button to be pressed, which doesn't exist yet, so we'll, we know that it'll be called btn back. This will um, run a function of go home, the very home screen or title screen. I think title actually, let's do title. Uh, title screen is uh, the very first uh, screen that we see, the, the title of the, um, of, this, uh, of the game. And then, therefore, the function definition is going to be here, go title, define, go title, trace, go to scene start frame one and movie clip is go to and play one scene start that's easy that's all we need to do in the in the help screen some object has an event listener after we interact with it in this case a touch or a tap it does something and the something is to go back to the title we will have to deal with music a little bit later. So what I'll actually do is write a note here to do. We need to do this eventually, uh, which is to uh, play music in S start again. Oops. We need to come back to that. Uh, once we've got the main game working, navigation, interactivity, then we'll start to add music. So just making a note here that eventually we need to deal with music here. When we move from screen to screen, the music might not play. That's the point. When music is in a timeline, music is very basic and it'll play in the timeline. But when we deal with interactivity of jumping from scene to scene, going back, going forward, and all of that, that's when we need to deal with music via code. So we'll have here some code to play the music again when we go back to the um, start screen. Okay, so the last thing we'll do before we do some lab time. Okay, uh, from start, I want to click play and go to the gate. I want to start to then finally interact with the game. So again, based on what we've done, very simple in terms of what we've learned so far. If our function go has this code to take us to that scene, we're going to need something 99% the same, but for the other scene. So here's some copy and paste. Copy and paste the movie clip code. And we just need to change it then to say S0 gate.
Now also regarding music, we need to add a little bit more here. So we go to the help scene, great. But in this particular scene, we have the activate music, deactivate music functions. These will eventually be set up to play the music in the title screen. Well, once I get to the actual game, we'll start the, the music of being in the mansion. So therefore, these event listeners over here that are paying attention to whenever the game is deactivated, these are technically paying attention to when uh, and caring about the title music in, the, in this title screen. Well, if we then don't stop paying attention to that, the music will double up. The music in the main level will play as, long, as well as the music in the title screen. So we've got these add event listeners. Pay attention to this. We've got uh, remove event listeners. Stop paying attention to this. So let's copy both of those lines completely both of those lines uh, near line 13 or so that are all about native application, event, add event listener, let's copy those. We're also going to paste them into function go start. On go start, after gate there, we'll paste those in, but very important, we need to change this from add event listener to remove event listener. I'll make the note here. Also, stop paying attention to the title screen music. Add event listener is to pay attention to the state of the game. If the game is running, play the title music activate. Well, we're not going to be in the title screen anymore. We're going to go to the first level, so we want a remove event listener for both of them. Stop paying attention to the title screen music. Note remove event listener. It really obvious here arrows So we have these event listeners that pay attention to various things that happen, but sometimes we need to stop paying attention to those things, especially when music conflicts. So uh, the rest of it is exactly the same. It says native application, etc., etc., uh, on the event of inactivate or deactivate and the particular function. So stop paying attention to that and don't run that function anymore. That's what that's saying. That's the opposite. Whereas we had add event listener, we're saying pay attention to when we return to the game, play the music. Pay attention to when we exit the game, stop the music. Here, stop paying attention to that, or else it'll replay the title music. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to run it. I'm going to test that that is. And hopefully no errors. Oops, seem to have an error here. Let's see what that's about. Access of undefined property, BTN back. Okay, yes. Uh, what is this error trying to tell me here? It doesn't exist doesn't exist exactly we wrote the code back on the help screen saying pay attention to something called BTN back and when that gets tapped run that function uh, well I see the button right there so why doesn't it know that this code is related to that button that button in my case I have not turned it into a symbol yet and I have not given it that instance name so on the help here, that's what that's saying. Find something on the screen with that instance name. Wait for it to be tapped 
then run a function. Whoops, I forgot to turn this back button into a symbol and give it an instance name. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to call it MC back BTN. Uh, that is select it, F8 to convert it, MC back BTN. Movie clip, center registration. Once it becomes a symbol in the library, then it needs a property or it needs an instance name in the properties, and that's the name of in the code btn back. It says instance of undefined property. It's saying it's saying there is something missing. I don't know what btn back is. Nothing had that instance name. Well, now it does. The back button has an instance name. Now when I test it, in my case no errors, I'll confirm on my device going from title screen to help screen back to um, title screen and I can press the uh, start the game play that should go then to the gate and this is as far as we are at the moment so confirming on mine. I go to help looks good I go back Go back to title, great, I press play, goes to the scary gate. That's as far as it goes, that's as far as we'll go for today. But you should have you should make sure none of your errors are 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 there. I'm gonna put this code so far into the network folder. I'm gonna put it on canvas. We're gonna have some lab time. You can either work on your tap frenzy game or you can work on the uh, Adventure Quest game, and we'll be here until 4, when we come back on Wednesday, uh, do some more lecture, have a little time, lab time for you to work on Tap Frenzy, and then continue Adventure Quest.